live from Soho, New York City, it's Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. Hey everybody, welcome to our live show all about wearable electronics. With me is Phil, Hello. Mr. Lady Ada himself. I will be doing things over here. Beep, beep, beep. Turning knobs, putting things around here. Clicking buttons, clicking L on some things that are in today's listening show. Listening to high technology. You've never listened to this show while it's <laughs> happening. <laughs> um, what's on today's show, Phil? On today's show, we have a special code. Code is chirp. Chirp. Chirp, chirp, chirp. Ten percent off. Floor and wearables category expires 11:59 p.m. tonight. Get on it. Wearable Wednesday. It's where we show you what's going on in the world of wearables on the blog. Debut a new project. Maybe show your projects. Component of the week. We share with you a neat electronics component and show you how it works and how to use it. Material spotlight. It's the most special string of all today. Oh boy, I can't wait to see this. And questions and answers. You've got questions. Becky has answers. Post your questions up at any time in the comments uh, here on YouTube or on Twitter, Google Plus, and I will collect them for an upcoming show. I prepare my answers for your questions, and if your question is answered on the show, you'll be eligible to win the show's giveaway. All that and more on Web Electronics with Becky Stern. Okay. All right. Um, I guess just just a quick show. programming note. Uh, so next week we have a show. Yep. But the week after, no show. No show. No show. We're back the week after that. for you. Yeah, no show. Uh, the 20, so that's the 26th, right? Yeah, the 26th ish, is yeah, when yeah, there's yeah. no show. That's the Wednesday when there's no show. Yeah, you're you're going to be on one side of the country. Yep. We're, uh, Lady Ada and I are going to be in Vegas at the Apex show. Yeah, you're so, also going to be in a similar side of the country. Yeah, just everybody go on that side for a bit. So <laughs> that's what we're going to be doing. So um, get your questions in right away if you want them answered. Like next week. Right, too. like next week. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait until April for me to answer your questions. Could, and like, for some of you, that's just not soon enough. Could be. <laughs> kind of a project going. Um, just one quick reminder the code is CHIRP. 10% off everything in the Adafruit store on the floor. And wearable category expires 11.59 p.m. tonight. That's 10% off everything in stock. Not gift certificates, not Eagle CAD, because those are not real physical things. I did um, some updating of the um, flora and wearables categories on, uh, on oh. Monday. Oh, okay. And um, so, you know, you might find a few more things in there than you are used to. Oh, that's nice. A couple things that are listed in project packs now cross-listed into flora Whoa. or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Just, you know, every once in a while you got to clean that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's like gardening. Yeah, totally like gardening. All right. I gardened the categories. <laughs> All right, first up, Wearable Wednesday. Every week, the best news that's fit to wear. Yeah, so if you look every week on the Adafruit blog, we have a really entertaining series of posts about cool wearable electronics projects. Leslie posted up the funniest thing today. It's like this bulletproof jacket that's covered in, and it's bulletproof because it's encrusted in, in diamonds, and it's like $8 million. I don't know if that counts. I mean, like, has anyone actually shot at this and like, oh, okay, well, okay. <laughs> no, so it's, a bulletproof, it it's a bulletproof suit because it's made out of diamonds. Made out of diamonds. <laughs> okay, isn't there a X? It's also sword proof, apparently. Isn't there an X person character? Is it X person or X man or X woman? I don't know. Di X person. I think the super the comic is called the X Men. Okay. It's the title of the comic. Yeah. Whether or not the title is sexist is, is yeah. you know outside of the scope of, of what the title is. I'm gonna call it X person. <laughs> anyway, that, so every week on the blog, there's cool stuff to check yeah. out. This is um, a customer project. Victor wrote in with his uh, LED hoodie he made for his niece. Very this is cool. cool. Um, with neo pixels all inside the hood, so you can do crazy animations. There's a video on the site if you want to take a look. That's at what it. I need. Thanks, and, Victor. And then I guess mm. the big news. It's sequins. It's sequins yeah. day. Bling, 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 the photo's bling. so bright. Bling, bling, bling. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, what is this? It's an LED sequin, and these are new in the in the store this week. Um, we'll have a video in a couple weeks about them, but you know I can't wait to tell you that they're new and you can buy them and put them in your projects. Um, and they're in the flora and or wearables category, so you can get 10% yeah. off. Um, the LED sequins are just a little surface mount LED and an appropriate resistor for the color of the LED um, on the little board with sewable pads. It's pretty simple. It's not a it's not an idea that hasn't been out there before, um, but we finally got around to making these really cool um, little yeah. guys. So you can like put in you know they're not they're not digitally addressable like the Neo Pixels are, but um, for a lot of projects you really just want to be able to turn on and you, off a few. You just LEDs. buy the color that you want and then you get these and you break them apart and you use them. Yeah, you right? sew them in. They're really small, so you can use them in cross stitch projects and bird projects, plush toys, um, yeah. all kinds of clothing and accessories. They're, they're a lot smaller than the NeoPixels, so we yeah. hope you'll have fun with those. And they, they come in four colors right now, um, blue, red, green, and warm white. And um, We're going to have more soon, too. Yeah, we're going to have more colors soon, including pink. Yeah. The cool thing is, as far as the manufacturing of these go, we're getting 100% yield. As in, oh, that's great. As in we Imports put in, you put in 100, you get out 100 yeah. perfectly, and we <laughs> test all of them. 
So yeah, is, I mean, uh, it's a really thin exciting. PCB. Um, so, you know, sometimes that can be tricky with flexing inside the machines, but um, yeah. yeah, I've heard these are coming out nicely yep. from the um, stenciler and the pick and place machine. Okay, next up. This week's project, we previewed it last week. You guys know what it is. We've yeah. had the plush owl. Um, so your own owl kit in the store now for a little while and we've been feverishly developing away this little circuit that uh, makes it make noise. So that's the big announcement today's project is is how to add sound, tilt ball activated sound to any plush toy. Yeah. And um, we uh, have a parts pack. So you can get yeah. not only the so your own owl kit but the parts for this build together as a kit. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll get uh, we'll go over this after the video. But this is everything you need to turn a felted owl, which we have in the store, into a chirpy owl. And the cool thing I like about this is it's a neat combination of um, something that someone made, used for workshops, and like here's how you make like a little felt animal. And then this mm -hmm. is something you saw and said, well, we can make like something with electronics. So you yeah. can. It's a two-part crafty project. It's really good if you have a pair of twins. <laughs> and you want them to work together on something? Oh, one one twin could do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, or you know, kids of a similar age, you get them working yeah. together on a project. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Or you know, the the sewing is pretty um, beginner level for the owl. So if you have, um, uh, but like this is not just for kids. Like it's definitely yeah. um, challenging for adults to do too. But yeah. it is a very basic soldering project. That's one of our tricks. We say, oh, this is this is for young people, but it just gives permission for adults. Poor and confident, yeah, and it's like, oh, if it's just for young people, I can just kind of, it's not going to be right. a big deal. Right, I can just yeah. try it. But it's a fun sewing and electronics project, so um, either take it on yourself, or uh, if you've got those two sides of your brain working yeah. together, or uh, work on it with a friend. We yeah. have a video. I was going to say, if there was only an instructional video that went over all these things You know, and the had joke, tripping, week after week, like, people, they catch wise people. to the fact that there's we might people. have a video about you, it. You know, there's, you know there's, 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 there's more people who haven't seen the show than have seen the show. That's, that's true. Now. That's true. I'm looking to the future. <laughs> to the future <laughs> okay, of tripping roll the, owls. Roll the video. Easy to mod your toys to talk using a little speaker and Gemma, Adafruit's tiny Arduino-compatible microcontroller. Today we'll build the Sew Your Own Owl Kit and add a motion-activated circuit to play animal sounds. You can code up your own animal sounds or try the ones included in the complete tutorial for this project on the Adafruit Learning System. This is a tilt ball switch. It's simply a metal ball in a tiny can. And as the ball moves inside, it connects the outer shell to another wire inside. The program running on Gemma is looking for this connection between pin D0 and ground, which then triggers the bird sound to play. The speaker by itself isn't very loud, so we'll use a transistor to make it louder. Each time the Gemma sends pulses to the speaker pin, the transistor applies power straight from the battery. Follow the circuit diagram to wire up the circuit and use heat shrink tubing to insulate your connections. Follow the instructions that come with the OWL kit. Then when it comes time to fill it with stuffing, insert the speaker and tilt switch. The Gemma goes in the tail, so you can easily plug and unplug the battery. So if you'd like to make your own electronic plush toy, you can get everything you need to make this chirping owl as a kit in the Adafruit shop. And yes, owls do chirp. I looked it up on YouTube. I do hope you'll share your projects with us on our weekly show and tell on Google Plus and subscribe for more DIY projects from Adafruit. All right, and we're back. That's the owl. Yep. It really does chirp and it doesn't stop. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't stop, stop yeah. I mean, it does stop if you put it down. <laughs> yeah. This is a perfect project to, to give a kid, and then you give the kid espresso or something like that, and a puppy or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All those things. So um, what's in this parts pack if you want to get the felt owl and make this? Um, the Gemma, the tiny... Okay. Shh, 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 owl! owl. Shh. So loud. Uh, the Gemma, the battery, the battery charger, uh, a little speaker, a tilt ball switch, um, a resistor, transistor, did I already say a bit of wire, and three pieces of heat shrink tubing. Yeah. Owl not included. You have to get the owl separately. The owl's not included. They're each like 20 bucks. Yeah. So this is a low cost project that you could do. Good for workshops. Good for... We split them up into two different things. Like, so we didn't make it a whole bundle so that it, you could just get the plush owl, the sew your own owl kit if you want. You could also just get the Gemma um, plush toy guts kit and put it in a toy you already have. Yeah. So um, that way it's most flexible. Or get them together and you know they work great. I shook the table and he tweeted. Yeah. 
All right. Oop. Someone could make a little Twitter Twitter bird. A little chirping at. Yeah, it wouldn't be that hard to. Um, and then you can interconnect it with a CC3000 and when it tweets, it could tweet. <laughs> and then it, it, it could tweet it about could the tweet. tweets. It would probably fit a Flora inside, which you could connect um, over serial or Bluetooth to your computer and uh, have oh, it yeah. tweet when you get a tweet. Yeah. That'd be pretty cute if it sat on front of the Internet of Things printer and it went tweet, tweet, and then the, then the tweet rolls out on the thermal could, printer. And then it tweets again. <laughs> and then it tweets yeah. again, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there are, um, there's some meows and barks in the, um, it's the same animal sound sketch mm -hmm. as Mike Barella did for his trinket-powered Beanie Baby. So um, you can use, there's different animal sounds. Okay. All right. Um, goodbye, Mr. Fun Ryan. project. Next up, component of the week. It's an owl pellet. <laughs> this is what comes out of the owl. No, no I um, wish the things that came out of owls were that yeah, shiny, but they uh, are not. Have you ever taken apart an owl pellet? Of course you have. Yeah. Yeah, me too. The little bones and stuff. Yeah, little cute. bones. You little put the mouse skeleton back together. Yeah. Summer camp. So, Good so times. This is Sputnik. We're selling Sputnik now. Yeah. Sputnik. Yeah. I had a friend named Sputnik in high school. His yeah. dad named her after the Russian space probe, and then when everybody, everybody tried to call her Sput uh, Sputnik yeah. or Sputnik, it was not okay. It was she, and she would. She's Indian, and she would be like, "No, Sputnik, like put." Oh, okay. Like, put That's it on the name. table. But this is a tilt ball switch. It is not Sputnik. Oh. Neither my friend nor the space probe. That's not actual size. This is a small part th that would be inside of an owl. Yeah, you saw it. It's right yeah. here. Ah. It's, just, it's not even as big as my okay. like thumbnail. Um, the tilt ball switch. Here's ah. one cut open. Ah. Yeah. So it is a little metal can with a wire driven up into the center and um, a wire connected to the outside can and then ball inside that moves around and when the ball hits the bottom of the can, it touches both the outside canister and the wire inside, which bridges the connection between the two wires, which you can measure with your microcontroller. Um, the tilt ball switch is, we have, and we have a tutorial on using them and how they work uh, on the Adafruit's learning system all by itself. You can find that in on the, um, yeah. The product page. And, and what's this? That's an old tilt switch, really old. It's made out of mercury. It's a glass tube with mercury inside it. Have you ever heard of the term, oh, it's a mercury switch? That means it's a very simple tilt switch, uh, but they don't make these anymore because they have, guess what, mercury inside yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, back in the day. My mom used to tell me stories about playing with mercury in their hands. They're yeah, sure. Like, yeah. They're all getting cancer. Well, I think, I think it's okay. Well, don't ever go near mercury. But <laughs> I think don't. at a very young age is when it's the most damaging, and and I think you can still it's still bad later, and you can lots of toxicity a issues. Yeah. Environmental. This is why this is why you don't see a lot of mercury anywhere. Right. And so. Because um, when you drop this thing on the floor and it breaks open, then you have an environmental hazard. Yeah, and, and the other thing, it it looks so cool too, and so it looks like cool. like Terminator Two style, like little liquid metal. It's the only metal that's liquid at room temperature, yeah? yeah? Anyway, so this mercury switch you can see has the two wire leads at the bottom and then when the mercury would slosh in over there it would make the connection. So that's an old style yeah. tilt switch. Um, and that's uh, cool. Yeah. Mercury is dense enough that it doesn't really bounce that easily so this makes a nice stable switch. But, you know, dangerous and fragile. Alright, next up. Material spotlight. This, this week it's embroidery floss. It's not liquid metal. It's not, I know, I, mercury is a material spotlight. Yeah. I, I'm gonna ship you a packet of mercury. No, it's embroidery floss as pictured here in our Flora Anglerfish embroidery so, shorts. So is it called floss, the, way, the same reason that floss is called floss for dental use? Why, why what reason is that? I don't know, it's on, is it on a reel? Is it, is it floss? Is it, I think is floss it is just another linear fiber, a strong yeah. one, right? And um, as opposed to like sewing thread, cotton embroidery floss is a lot stronger. Like if you want to. Yeah, um, so it's multi, it has more than one. It has more than one strand. And so um, for designs like this one on screen, you're seeing you use like the whole strand, but then for various other things, you might yeah. not want to use the whole strand. This comes up because it's in the owl. The owl has an embroidered yeah. face. Um, we have a kit called the Ohm Sweet Ohm cross stitch kit that comes with a bunch of embroidery floss and allows you to stitch up this picture, which is a resistor chart. You can hang in your hacker space, and some of them, some of the strands don't use the whole. Now this is where it's going to get confusing, folks. Now let's do, you know, watch closely. So this is an open source pattern. Yes. And I mean, then this, this is, is photograph. and this is floss, and floss is also free libre open source, and then this is an open source pattern. So don't get confused, guys. Don't cross that uses the floss. floss the yeah. Floss streams. This is mega floss. <laughs> floss lowercase. Which was abandoned in the eighties and all of it. Mega, mega floss. floss. Really? Yeah. No. <laughs> Yeah, and they had the instrument and they flossed it. <laughs> Four out of five dentists love this band. Because they would encourage you to floss? Yeah. Is that a, um, floss. Is that a, um, 
uh, what's that TV show, Metal Metal Metalocalypse? Is that the oh, band from Metalocalypse's song? Do they have no. a song about floss? No, they, they should would. though. They should. They're like, you know what that show? It's like a parody of a have of a Swedish metal band animated show. Anyway. No, but now I want to know. Embroidery floss. It's made out of cotton, except when it's not. Um, in the okay. kit, we have a couple of plastic, uh, like, metallicized fibers, but mainly yeah. it's cotton. Here is um, one of my first experiments with embroidery, and I used some conductive thread and some components to add to the picture. I was, like, supposed to be an embroidery sampler. Yeah. That, and the sampler in the embroidery context has, um, like, a whole bunch of different kinds of stitches you know, like to sample the different techniques and then you yeah. can hang it on your wall and look at it and be like, oh, I want to use that. But this is also a, like a sampler of different yeah. electronics components. This was back in the day, <clears throat> Becky Stern, before there was stainless steel, right? Uh, this yeah. Is, so the, the, this is a good example of a project that, it, it, it this pr project retires. Yeah. Right? Well, like, it's still it, hanging it, on the wall. It looks pretty, but it yeah, doesn't make it doesn't sound work. anymore. Yeah, yeah because cause... it used silver, because that was the only thing around at the time. Yeah, and now, the silver if you corroded. Stain, now if you use stainless steel, which you would, it would last. Yeah, so if you want to make a new embroidery project, uh, use yeah. our stainless steel thread, conductive thread if you want to add electronics to it, and yeah. it'll last for a really long time. Um, this is my pro tip about embroidery floss. In the tutorial for the owl, or the instructions that come with the owl, it tells you to split the strands. And I learned this really cool embroidery floss technique from my friend Rachel Hobson, who's a professional crafty lady and em embroidery educator. There's six strands in most cotton embroidery floss, and you only really need to use three, or depending, like, or two, depending on the instructions. And the easiest way to separate it is actually not from the end, because it'll get all twisted. You actually just untwist it in the middle, stick your thumbs in, and then with your hands open, where are my, both of my hands? With your hands uh, open, just pull okay. them apart, and the strands will come apart without, um, without tangling, because the ends will untwist as you're pulling. So now I have yeah. magic, a split strand of embroidery floss. And you can see it much better in that picture. Yeah. That's the back of the cross-stitch kit yeah. pattern. Back. So you can make a lot of cool stuff with embroidery floss. You can uh, make friendship bracelets, cross stitch, um, and the difference between like cross stitch and regular embroidery is kind of the difference between Photoshop and Illustrator, like yeah. um, raster graphics versus vector graphics. But you can stitch up uh, many different kinds of images. It's yeah. really fun to like trace over a picture of your dog or your friend and use that as an embroidery pattern. Yeah. Um, it's a really fun way to get used to stitching if you're if you are new to sewing and needle needle crafts at all. Um, embroidery is a nice way to get into it because you have a nice um, hoop that's holding your piece of fabric really tight, so you don't have like anything flopping all around. Yeah. And then once you get comfortable using a needle and embroidery floss, it's pretty easy to go over to like hand sewing the owl toy together or yeah. um, making your own plush toys or your that's own cool. fashion. You can get floss and then download a floss pattern and make a floss. Product project. Yeah, and then include it in your in your mega floss metal you can, video, I guess. And you can release the music under a floss license, and you can put the photos up on some floss thing. Flickr. So, yeah, you can put under you can put under an o a open license yeah. on Flickr. So much floss. Phil is trying really hard just with the. With the the floss jokes. Yeah, anyway, that's our that's material it. of the week. I really like embroidery like floss. It comes lots of different colors. You can even do that thing with your hair. If you, another speaking of summer camp, you can like wrap a braid in your hair with um, embroidery floss to make a cool. Uh, I don't remember what they call those now. Yeah, I wouldn't look to you for help on that one. There's like a thing where girls wrap their hair in embroidery floss, and you have like a friendship bracelet that is in your hair. Yeah, I neither had cool childhood or friendship. <laughs> <laughs> it was a girl thing, definitely. Okay. That's why. That's why. All right. <laughs> um, let's get on to the question and answers. You didn't have summer camp is the operative <laughs> phrase there. Yeah. All right. Question and answers. This what? is the prize. Today. Yeah. What are these? This is the prize. Um, what we're going to give away the Sew Your Own Owl Kit and the Gemma uh, Talking Toy Guts Kit, so you can build yeah. this your very own Chirpy Chirpy Owl, which I clearly unplugged earlier because it was chirping to me. Yeah. This is the special. This was the special unplugged edition of Alan Sherp. <laughs> so now so we're you gonna. can. So um, the question. What do we call them? The askers today yeah. um, have a chance to win the kit, the supplies required to make this. Okay. And um, if you would like to enter one of our future giveaways, all you have to do is ask a relevant wearable electronics question in yeah. the comments here, or on Twitter, or Google Plus, or the Adafruit blog, or Carrier Owl. Carry on. Yeah. And um, we'll include them in a future show. Okay, this one is from Chad. 
I would like to be able to put together a jacket, like the one Phil wears, where I add external controls or displays that can be easily removed, attached, and I don't harm the jacket or leave obvious connectors. Previously I inquired about magnets as to connectors to flora pins. Do you know of any shallow pin backing combo that would work, or perhaps some other idea? So I was thinking about your question, Chad, and um, apparently you're not, you're not happy with the snaps. He's not, apparently not happy with the snaps on your jacket. The GPS jacket? Oh, I thought maybe you like snapped at them or something. Yeah. Uh oh, -uh, you gotta use snaps. Um, so <laughs> snap at the people who ask me if yeah. you can wash your no, snap Snaps are good. Yeah, the snaps yeah. are good, but he said without obvious connectors, and I feel like the GPS jacket has kind of obvious connectors. Now, we have a yeah. magnetic pin back that fits on the back of Flora. Um, it's not meant to be used for electrical connections. In fact, yeah. it goes between the pads on Flora, but it holds Flora to your garment. So if you really wanted to, you could have like a. Um, just regular wire plug connector that's got black headers, and then yeah. you have a, wi a wire that plugs into it, and it like disappears into a seam in your jacket, yeah. and then the mag the magnetic pinback just holds the flora to your jacket. Yeah, there, I mean, there's conductive Velcro, but that's really only for a switch. There's all sorts of things, but right. it, it's going to require like some um, plugging. Yeah. So like, um, but if you had like your you're talking about putting displays on your jacket, and you want like them to be interchangeable. Um, put your like driving hardware on the inside, and then have a little cable that comes out that plugs into your display that then magnets on with the, with a couple of magnetic pinbacks or something. Okay. So that your connectors are separate from your attachment mechanism is really my suggestion. Good answer. Next, uh, what is the best way to get started in wireless charging for wearables? Wow. Oh well, did you see this project we did where we put this inductive charger in a bag, and make it charge your cell phone when it's on yeah. the shelf? You should try that project. It's the inductive charging purse project, and I know if you're not your dude, you might not carry a purse with you. It yeah. works with a backpack too. Yeah. Um, it's a really good first step at um, doing wireless yeah. charging. Yeah. We have all the parts to do that too. Yeah. Next. Uh, this is from 845 Boys. When using a Gemma battery pack and NeoPixel for wearables, what is the heat output from those items over, say, a five hour period? Is it enough to be worried about what fabric you're using for your project to make sure you don't have the project caught fire? Uh, no, you don't need, really need to be worried. Um, the only time you need to be worried is if, um, if you make a short circuit. So if you're doing like the sparkle skirt tutorial, oh, excuse me, yeah. and you, um, have a lot of LEDs sewn with conductive thread in traces that could, um, that could short, short power yeah. to ground. Um, like the circuit itself, if it's functioning properly, is is not going to heat up enough to burn any fabric or melt any fabric. It's it, it might, the LEDs will get a little bit warm uh, when they're very bright, but it won't generate very much heat. Yeah. However, if you make a shorted electrical connection, it can make a spark. Um, and generate heat, and it can, um, like fabrics like polyester yeah. might melt. I, I doubt that your project would catch on fire if it were like cotton or some other kind of flammable material. I doubt it would catch on fire, yeah. but polyester and other synthetic fabrics can melt, and if it's, me if it's near your body, it can melt to your body. Yeah. And so I would take precautions when using synthetic fabrics and conductive thread, just... Um, generally speaking. Yeah. yeah, just generally speaking. But what you're talking about is a function is a circuit that's not shorted, a normal circuit, and by no way can yeah. 20 neopixels over five hours generate enough heat to um, catch your garment on fire. A good reminder of why we don't put onboard charging on wearables because that's where a lot of heat comes. Yeah, from. Yeah, because batteries do get hot when you charge them, and you don't want those to be yeah. on your clothes while or your body when you're charging them. Yeah, like and there was that guy who put the. Oh, I heard this horrible story. The, we blogged that this guy put that big block of electronics in his arm, the wetwear he, guy. He put it inside of him. He had an, a, an, a light poly battery inside of <laughs> yeah. him, and they did like a, a reconfiguration. It had an inductive charger, but the inductive charger was like too close to the battery, and it induced a field in the battery and made the battery get hot, and it was inside. Ow! It, 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 this story just went the wrong way once it was, he put a screen inside of him. We're not yeah. ready for that yet. No, a little battery, a lithium polymer yeah. battery. Yeah, it'll so. happen one day. It'll be commonplace. Yeah. We'll have screen tattoos and like it'll be fun. Yeah, we'll get hacked and it'll be like your ad here or something like. But yeah, uh, that one that was intense. Yeah, so careful on that one, folks. <laughs> but under normal circumstances, yeah. it'd be totally fine. What's the safest battery pack to use with hand knits? So um, knits are stretchy. So the concerns about batteries and, and knitted things are just uh, like strain relief on wires. So lithium polymer batteries, they don't come in a case and it makes it easy. If you yank on the wires, they'll come right off um, and you have to re them to the battery, which can be kind of sketch. So um, I would, but there's nothing inherent about the f fiber quality, like what it's made out of, if it's wool or cotton or whatever, that would yeah. 
that would necessitate a different battery pack. I would just say if you're a beginner and you want to be sure you're not um, like stepping out of your comfort zone, use an alkaline battery pack that takes like double or triple A batteries yeah. and has an on-off switch on it. And then um, that way it's all encased in, pl in hard plastic. You can watch our batteries video, it would help you too. But yeah. um, that way, like if any of your knitting catches on it or whatever, you're not going to be yanking those wires off. Um, and um, you'll be sure that if things are stretchy that it'll be safe. But, you know, if you're an advanced, like I could put it, a, like the Chameleon Scarf has a Li poly battery in a knit thing. Yeah. And it's totally fine. Yeah. Because it's like attached to, this, to the floor board. I've seen you use like car batteries to power your laptop, so like you're in a different category. All right. <laughs> it's, it's true. an emergency it's circumstance. True. It's true. All right. Next up. <laughs> I needed to blog, Phil. This Don't is, you understand? I do. I do. <laughs> I would have been on a pedal bike with a pedaling that day. All right. Just finished watching one of your DIY videos on Adafruit, and I have a serious question. Why do you pronounce solder as solder? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thanks, Mr. Okay. Mr. Brit. I don't. Um, or other European, uh, like British English and the Oxford English Dictionary yeah. um, lists solder as pronounced solder uh -huh. with an L. But guess what, Europeans? You guys got lots of silent letters. Kalur. <laughs> That's one. I, um, I recall we decided to leave Europe and, and colonize this country. So that we could pronounce things we however we wanted to. We threw tea in the harbor so we could say solder. That's what happened. The answer to your question is because we're American, and if you look it up on Wikipedia, all Americans say it that way, and that <laughs> makes it not wrong. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to keep saying it that way. However, I have a thing when yeah. I get this question a lot, so I wanted to answer it. And like, no worries. We all say stuff different. You you like add an extra syllable to the word aluminum. Yeah. I don't hold you against Nothing hold it separates against you. the British and the Americans other than our language. It's something that we may never get over. Uh, <laughs> well, what I would encourage you is that if it sounds strange to you, because you did mention it sounds, sounds strange, right? Yeah. Um, you should start making, you and those like you, should start making wearable electronics videos where you say the word solder the way you think it should be said so that, um, you know, mainstream traction. Vote with your soldering yeah, irons. Vote with your YouTube or videos. soldering irons. Soldering <laughs> irons. See, that sounds funny to us. Do you see how we can't even say it? Anyway, it's, it's just because we're American, and Americans say all kinds of silly things. If they want to take their gerbs. <laughs> <laughs> we have a gerb saying sorter. <laughs> all right, that's all the questions. Becky. Remember, if you if you would like to enter our giveaway, you just have to ask a question like the questions we answered today, um, yeah. but about something different, and um, you'll be entered to win the giveaway. All right, let's uh, let's do this. Let's give away this thing. <laughs> Still laughing at gerbs. Yeah. <laughs> take the gerbs. Okay, I'm randomly selecting um, one of these comments. Oh, it's Emily Gertz. The safest battery pack to use with hand knits, UF1, congratulations. The Chirping Owl toy kit and the okay. Gemma Plush toy guts kit. Please email support at adafruit.com to claim your prize. I will also reach out to you on the YouTubes. Okay. Um, don't forget, folks, the code is CHIRP. 10% off everything in the Adafruit store in the Flora and Warbles category expires tonight. 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Get your chirp on and get an owl. Chirp. Chirp. Or some other yeah. stuff. Yeah. A lot of people are... Ready to move on to the next project that maybe doesn't make sound here. It's been, it's, it's been chirping a lot. <laughs> it's been chirping it's a fine. lot. We've been working. <laughs> we, I'm ready to move on. When Lamar was working on Draudio, there was like kind of a month of just like, yeah. rawr, rawr. it was cool, but then eventually when it was over, the chirping has to go away to Mr. Chirping. <laughs> I might change it to, to now, that, now that it's uh, done being filmed chirping, I might change yeah. it to the meow, oh, so fun. that it's a meowing owl. Yeah. Yeah. Meow. Okay. Because everybody has infinite, infinite tolerance for cat noises. Yeah. All right, everyone. That's the show. Thank That's you for it. watching Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern and Mr. Lady Ada. We'll be back again next week, but not the week after. Cause but we're, then we're back the week after. But then we'll be back, back, yeah. back the week after that. Yeah. Um, join us again next week, 2 p.m. If you have a project to share, you can come and join our weekly show and tell. That's tonight at 7.30 on That's right. Google+. Plus. You can request to be uh, add the circle, add to, to the circle, and you can show off your project. That's a very fun thing to do. That's right. And then ask an engineer right after that at 8 p.m. Yeah, and we're totally taking the Web Electronics Becky Stern style, and we're starting to add questions in advance to ask an engineer Sweet. that we're reading. No, it was a plan. You, yeah. were, you were the rapid prototype. It's good. We're now catching up. I like it because yeah. it's you can I can pick the questions in advance yeah. and prepare answers for them. Yeah, so we're going to start doing useful. that tonight. So uh, tune in for that, folks. Ooh, exciting.
Okay, we'll see everybody next week. Bye.